When I first came in to recovery, I was crazier than a lunatic. I was a lunatic. Once the booze was gone out of my life, I became very angry, very enraged, very lonely, very emotionally unstable, mentally unstable. I was like, I was crazy. I was more stable on the booze than I was off the booze. The booze helped me remain stable in my life. And I remember, you know, I was sober for about nine months, if you want to call it that. But I remember, you know, having this, this, this uncontrollable rage and what was going on, my ex at the time, the mother of my children were selling all my stuff because I got kicked out of the house, but we're talking on the phone a little bit. And I found out through the grapevine that she was selling some of my stuff and I got totally enraged. I called her up and I threatened her on the phone. And let me tell you something, do not ever threaten anybody on the phone. Don't, don't do that. It's not going to work out well for you. Believe me. The police came and here in Canada, where I live, it was the OPP. It was in a little town called Carlton Place, just outside Ottawa. They took me to the OPP station and I sat there and I felt so hopeless. I was sober for nine months. I was going to meetings. I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't working the program or any recovery program. I wasn't reaching out for help. I was just dry drunk and I was just crazy. I thought if I quit the alcohol, my life would get better, but it got a lot worse. It really did. You know, at that time, I didn't think my family wanted anything to do with me. Well, they got fed up. Well, I had no friends, that's for sure. I had, um, you know, my ex didn't want anything to do with me for sure. I pushed everybody away and I was sober and I was sober and I just was going crazy. I was going crazy. And I remember going up in front of the judge and the Crown Attorney here in Ottawa, they're called Crown Attorneys in in the U.S., you might call them district attorneys. Same thing. He just pounded on me. Mr. Ravery's violent. Mr. Ravery's out of control, in which I was. I was out of control. I don't know if I was so violent the way he, he made me sound like I was like uh, Charles Manson. I couldn't believe it. But I was toast, man. I was toast. No one knew I was even there. Only the cops. But no one knew. And then my ex who called the cops, right? But no one knew I was there. And I was at the lowest low. I was at the hopeless, most hopeless point of my life. They pounded at me. They wanted to keep me in jail. And then there was a pause. He stopped. The district, the town attorney stopped hammering at me. The judge paused the court. And this little guy, I'm not kidding you. This little guy came up to me and he looked like Danny DeVito. I looked down. I was, I was, I was up in the, in the witness stand and I looked down. And this guy came up to me and he looked like Danny DeVito. That's the first thing that came to my head. Man, you look like Danny DeVito. And I said, who are you? And he says, I'm your lawyer. I said, you're my lawyer. How did you even know I was here? And he says, someone called me and told me to be here to represent you. And I just start to cry. Like I just start, the tears just start to pour out of me because I felt something magical happened that very moment even in my worst state of my life my lowest lowest the odds all stacked against me like i was going to jail somebody out there i don't know if it was one of the cops my ex a stranger any i don't know who it was saw something in me that i couldn't see in myself and called this guy this lawyer and he says i'm gonna get you out of here terry and for first time, like I said, I regained a little bit of hope and a little bit of faith that there was a higher power and somebody out there cared enough for me to help me in my most pathetic time. And you know who it was? It was a guy who looked like Danny DeVito. And he said to me, he said, I'm going to not let them keep you in jail. I'm not going to let that happen. You're going to get out today. And I was like, wow, really? That's going to happen to me? And he says, I'm going to do my best. So they went back and forth on, you know, my, my uh, personality and my behavior. And it wasn't that great. I might have considered keeping myself in jail for all the nasty things I did and said. But the judge said to the district attorney, the, not the district attorney, the crown attorney, Mr. Ravery has no violence in his history. He doesn't really even have a criminal record. I see no reason to keep him in custody and he turned to me 
and he read me the riot act again. He gave me the terms and conditions of my freedom. And he basically said, do not come back here. You do not want to come back here in front of me if you breach these terms of your freedom, but you're free to go. It was this little lawyer that it looked like Danny DeVito that regained my faith in a higher power who saved my life, who saved me and put me on the road to recovery. Just that little bit of help, just that little bit, that little push at the jumping off point. Someone saw enough in me to help me. And that's how the Danny DeVito lookalike saved me and put me on the road to recovery. You know, and when you're down and out and you're thinking no one wants anything to do with you, you may be surprised. You may be surprised. There's a lot of people in your corner rooting for you to get better, to get sobriety or get away from that addiction and have a full and happy life. Just like to this day, I don't know who it was. To this day, I do not know. I know it wasn't the court. I know it wasn't the court system and maybe it was one of those cops, but anyways, doesn't matter who it was now, that's 30 years later. Just that little spark gave me enough confidence and enough belief that there was a higher power and something else there looking after me. The goodness of the world was looking after this two-bit loser, this two-bit loser. You know, it's amazing how life goes, isn't it? It's amazing, amazing. Long as we don't give up, there's always hope. Long as we don't give up, the miracle can just be around the corner. It can be just right there for the pickings. We need to keep moving forward and understand that recovery, sobriety will not be easy at times, but it will be worth it. It will be worth it. I have a big full life today, I really do. And I just wanna tell you, it's because of my recovery. It's because of that. And it's because of that very moment in that courtroom. That, that little lawyer came up to me and regained faith. I had some sort of spiritual awakening at that very moment that said to me, it's time, Terry. It's time to do something about this mess. It's time, okay? My name is Terry G. This is an alcohol-free life channel. We're willing to live sober one day at a time. If you can take a second, can you please subscribe to my channel? Take another second and hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. I wish you all a happy Canada Day. It's, happy, it's Canada Day here. It's uh, it's July 1st. <laughs> July 1st here in Canada. And we're celebrating Canada Day. And I know uh, my American buddies to the south have July 4th coming up. And happy July 4th birthday to all of us. We, are, we have freedom and are these two wonderful countries and all the democracies across the world. I wish you all a great and sober and loving day, okay? Remember, sob sobriety is freedom. It really is. Stay safe, stay sober, and God bless. Ciao for now, and I'll talk to you later. Ciao, bye-bye.